So I'm going to try to maintain the thrill. Um, well, first I would like to say that it's true we are currently negotiating with uh, the Council, with the Parliament, based on the proposal we've tabled. I would like to mention that you have a voice that can be heard. So please feel free to say to us, to say to your uh, member state representatives, to your MEPs, what you feel are the challenges for the future. So thanks again for uh, having invited the European Commission Services to give a presentation about the proposal for an amended PBD and more precisely about the provisions which support the uptake of smart technologies and buildings. It's good to see that uh, the value of smart technologies is recognized by the building community and that initiatives like this workshop take place. I have to say I really appreciate talking in front of this audience. So I'm going now to try to understand how it works, I guess, this way. So I will begin with uh, some highlights about the Clean Energy for All Europeans package. As you all know, the Commission has tabled end of November 2016 a large set of proposals for amending several key directives of the energy area. This is the Clean Energy for All Europeans package. And if adopted, this package will basically lead to a major evolution of the EU energy policy framework that will eventually drive us to a completely different energy system. In 2030, 50% of electricity will come from renewables, and in 2050, the electricity will be completely carbon free. The transition to this new energy world is not only about sustainability and environment, it is also about the competitiveness and the prosperity of our economies. The drivers of this initiative from the Commission is to lead the EU towards a prosperous, sustainable and secure energy system in line with the priorities set by the EU's energy union. The three main pillars of the package are to put energy efficiency first, to demonstrate global leadership of the EU in renewables, and last but not least, to put consumers at the center of the initiative, making sure they will reap the benefits of this new policy framework. On these grounds, the European Commission has released a policy framework that covers, covers all areas of interest, in particular, electricity market design, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. All these elements of the framework are structured by a pivotal energy union governance that sets the rules for the implementation of these policies and ensures overall consistency. This, this uh, framework aims at setting the conditions for investments in the grid, new generation, housing and industry, at providing a clear market pool for new technologies, at making energy markets work better, and at ensuring all Europeans would individually benefit from the energy union, strengthening their rights and their active role. This package is also clearly a European package which relies on a more coordinated EU-wide approach to energy policy. One important issue is also that the package is very consumer-centric. Consumers with this new uh, policy framework would be better informed. For instance, the revised electricity directive entitles every cons customer to request a smart meter and guarantees to all EU electricity consumers free of, free of charge access to certified energy comparison tools. Consumers would be empowered thanks to demand response and to the right to generate electricity for either their own consumption or to sell it creating the conditions for a full and fair participation to, to the market. The aim is also to protect those consumers uh, who need it through a variety of dedicated measures, for instance, by monitoring energy poverty in the EU. As you all know, the package puts energy efficiency first. The proposal in this area relies on three complementary components. The first is a proposal for an amended energy efficiency directive in which the European Commission is proposing a binding EU level target of 30% for 2030, up from the current target of at least 27%. Uh, then we have the proposal for an amended energy performance of buildings directive 
which keeps its current scope while introducing targeted, targeted amendments to increase the impact. And then the co-design working plan, which includes a list of new products, product groups, for instance, air heating, air heating products and cooling products. As regards the EPBD, it is worth reminding the importance of the building sector. Buildings represent, as you all know, 40% of energy consumption and 36% of CO2 emissions in the EU. In addition, the sector features some specificities which makes it an impactful target to leverage on when it comes to energy efficiency. A significant portion, uh, about 75% of our building stock is energy inefficient. And the turnover is very low, which means uh, uh, there is actually an opportunity to, and, and a significant potential for energy efficiency improvement in the, in the building sector, and that we, the EU, have to tap this potential. With uh, these objectives in, in mind, the European Commission has proposed targeted amendments to the PBD in order to make it simpler, smarter, and more supportive for more impact. Uh, a strong emphasis in the proposal has been set on energy efficient renovation. Article 2A of the proposal introduces the requirement for member states to define and implement long-term renovation strategies. This provision was initially in the energy efficiency, in the energy efficiency directive but it has been moved to the EPBD for more consistency. Two paragraphs have also been added to require that renovation strategies lead to a decarbonized stock by 2050 and to introduce a smart finance for smart building approach to mobilize investments. In addition to the renovation strategies, Article 10 of the proposal clarifies that member states shall link their financial measures for energy efficiency improvements in the renovation of buildings to the energy savings achieved due to such renovation. The proposal also sets a high priority on uh, building smartness and to this end introduces additional provisions. Why uh, such a focus? Basically because building smartness becomes a requirement Buildings are now complex systems. They rely on the simultaneous and consistent operation of a large set of systems adapt to users in real time and embed energy generation and storage capacities. Effectively managing modern buildings require advanced smarter control technologies. In addition, smart buildings are broadly acknowledged as key enablers of future smart energy grids. In addition, there are many benefits to reap from building smartness. The main is that smartness enhances energy efficiency, it also improves comfort of building users, and it has very limited upfront costs. In the area of building smartness, in Article 2, the definition of technical building systems has been refocused and extended to ensure it is clear and to take into account the additional systems that are part of modern buildings. In particular, the scope of te technical building systems has been extended to include building automation and control, on-site electricity generation, and infrastructure for electromobility. In addition, in Article 8, the first paragraph requires uh, system requirements for new, replaced, and upgraded technical building system, and a new fifth paragraph has also, also been included to require the documentation and tracing of technical building systems energy performances over their lifetime. These modifications will foster the uptake of efficient technologies in buildings and ensure that performance of systems is monitored and maintained over the lifetime. These provisions are complementary to the ones from Article 14 and 15 in which electronic monitoring is proposed as an alternative to inspections of heating and cooling systems. The updated Article 8 includes, in addition, provisions to support the uptake of electromobility in the EU. The provisions require the installation of recharging points in non-residential buildings with more than 10 parking spaces 
and the precabling of parking spaces in residential buildings. The provisions apply to all new buildings and to major renovations and from 2025 to all non-residential buildings. Exemptions can apply in some cases, for instance, for buildings owned and used by SMEs. An additional paragraph of Article 8, and Doris' presentation was a very nice introduction to, to this point, specifically aims at supporting the uptake of smart technologies in buildings. The proposal here is to require the definition and provision of a smartness indicator for buildings. This uh, indicator would cover three main areas of building smartness, the ability to manage and optimize operation, to allow for effective interactions with occupants, and to take part in demand response. The definitions and the conditions under which this indicator would be provided would be developed through delegated power. And uh, our uh, opinion is that the creation of uh, this modest indicator would ensure that owners, tenants, and consumers are aware of the added value of smart technologies and that this will encourage investments in this area. This is the end of this presentation. Thanks a lot for your attention.